how to create something like this in Affinity Photo using Perlin Noise. You need a layer, so layer, a new layer. Then go to Filters, down to Noise and Perlin Noise. And you can set the value to anything. Now I'm going to go with about 13, 322, 21, 22. And negation. That's the key thing, the blend mode. Click apply. And you can see you get this cloud effect. Exactly the same as the cloud filter in Photoshop. But what you can also do is go to filters again, go to down here, noise. You could also distort it as well. That's another possible. Go to noise and pearl in noise. Now you can see you've got this lovely crackling energy all the way through this. And I'm using negation. You could go through the other ones, try them out. But negation is, I think, one of my favourite ones. You can also modify the zoom. So as you do that, you can see the ripples change. And you can go maybe like there. I want it fairly sort of 445, that sort of value. The others you can keep the same. But you can, if you want, change them. Click apply. What you can also do is you can go to filters, colours and auto levels. And you get that. But even better is you can use Apply Image. Apply Image is one of those sort of brilliant toolkits of filters. So filters, Apply Image. Go into that and use current layer as source. You can also load a source from file. But I'm gonna go with the layer, so click that. And you can go through here. You can use any of these blend modes, just try them out, run through them. You can see just a subtle change. Maybe go with darker color or add, or lighten, just try them. But also another great option, equations. So click there, with that you've got RGB, you can also try grayscale or CMYK. That's useful as well. Obviously the document's an RGB document, but just try it out. Go with the RGB, and instead of DR, which is the red channel, I'm gonna paste in this, SR times OSC sin, bracket SR times 10, bracket. In this one, I'm just gonna go, just slightly change it. At the moment it's times 10, obviously I don't want SR. I want G, so SG. You've gotta be an uppercase. Needs to be uppercase. And the OSC sin makes all this sort of ripples, these sort of, these contour design. That's what that's doing. But instead of 10, I'm gonna go with 15. You could vary, you don't have to go with 15, you could go with 12, 12.5, 22, just try it out. And SP, I'm gonna put SP there, and you can see now I've got this lovely colorful design, very quickly using this, and SP, and instead of that, I'm gonna go with 20. You could vary, try out other ones, 30, and so on. Or maybe go with these ones, 25, just try different values. Once you've done that, Maybe again, try this. You can run through and you can see will one work better than others? Lighting's fine. Normal, much the same. Click apply. Now you can see this is slightly coarse. It's not ideal. Unfortunately, the result is always a bit coarse like that. So what you can do, you can always go to filters, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'd like to just blur it slightly. Maybe 4.3. So you don't want to lose the general sort of all these lines and lovely contours. So click apply. Then go to filters and then lighting. So lighting, and with that, you can see you can move this around, you can use this one. Personally, my favorite is directional. I wish it would always start with that as default. Doesn't, unfortunately. And you can move the direction around. I'm just gonna keep it there. And you can change the ambient, but you can also change the texture. And as you do that, you can see the result. So just change it, push it up to 60. Now, if you'd gone without the blur, you wouldn't have had this lovely structure here. It would have actually been a bit rougher. I think the blur just gives that extra touch. And click apply. And there it is. Using Perlin noise, you can get this wonderful, colorful effect very quickly. And of course, once you've got it, you can distort it, you can save it to your assets. It's always a good one. So window and assets, just tuck it away with it selected. Go over here and add from selection. Then you can reuse it in future project, maybe as a background design, overlays, and of course you can always add other colors to it. You can also go to layer and maybe new adjustment layer, because I don't want to just completely wreck it. Because of course if I use filters, I could deform it, all those sort of things, but that's not a great result. So new adjustment, you can go over here, 
maybe go for recolor. And you can then get a lovely red design like that, or maybe move it through there, go with saturation and tweak it and so on. Another option, let's just remove that. You could also go for layer and down here to new life filter layer. And the great thing about that is it doesn't destroy that image. Thought and twirl, or you could use one of the other ones. Mesh warp is a real nice one, so let's mesh warp. And you can distort it, and then you can create a lovely sort of very unusual distorted design. And of course you can distort it in lots of different ways. And once you've done that, click done. Now the underlying design is still there. You haven't destroyed it, but now you've got this lovely distorted one, which you can then expand out here. Got your pixel layer, you've got your mesh warp. But also what you can do, you hold down the there, hold down the auto option key and drag, and you can duplicate, and you can create multiple layers. Or another thing, you can always go to effects, click there, maybe add an outer shadow and so on. Click close. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you much.